Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 with my continuing series of Strategic Command World War II War in Europe. And as I'm still learning to delve into this game and getting more and more um, knowledge about it, it is really a sophisticated game. It is not the easiest one to get into, so I hope this series helps you. It does take the old board games that it sort of looks like and um, moves it up, steps it up a level or two. So, what I've talked about in one of the episodes in one of my other series on Hearts of Iron, about velocity. And um, when is this a pocket versus a penetration? And some of that comes down to velocity. Velocity on um, one element of it, as I'm using it, is a um, speed of movement. But velocity can also be um, seen as, um, because we are in a firepower age, the velocity and sustainability as well of attack. Um, say in the 18th century, um, most soldiers had between, I don't know, um, 30 and 60 cartridges in, um, that they carried for battle um, in a cartridge box. Um, and it varied via nations. Um, it, uh, of course, it varied on circumstances because sometimes they just didn't have more ammo. But I'm talking about design, about um, theoretical um, uh, ammo amounts. And that, you know, um, has certain limitations, especially if you're looking at around um, the 60 um, cartridges. Part of that is bulk and weight. Um, you know, I'm talking brown best musket, you're talking well, almost an ounce of lead there for um, your um, 75 caliber musket. So 60 ounces of lead, you know, it's getting heavier. Um, that's part of the element. But also, when you're talking about a musket, you're talking about fouling. If you put 60 rounds through your musket, you largely, and it, you know, you can be debated, but to, to one degree or another, you've fouled that gun up that it's no longer going to reliably function. So what you need to do is stop and clean it. And in the 18th century, that means getting water, pouring water down the, the barrel of the gun, um, cleaning, swabbing all that stuff out. Of course, a wet gun that you pour um, uh, powder down doesn't work. So, um, you know, um, when you're going through that process, you're basically out of the battle, I don't know, half an hour, an hour, with a sufficient water supply and place and time to to do all of that um, cleaning reliably, you can presumably, if the ammunition stores are there, resupply up your, your ammunition. But if you're talking World War II, which of course we are, um, a lot of nations were still looking around at that, um, you know, in the cartridge belt, 60 rounds of ammo. Now, other nations, you could easily be carrying, you know, 120 plus rounds. But you're starting to carry much more than 120 rounds, along with all of the other equipment you're starting to carry, you're starting to talk real weight limitations and um, so your your velocity of not just say riding in a truck versus walking versus crawling on your belly and, and, and advancing towards the enemy, that is part of you know velocity cavalry here versus infantry kind of thing that you know a velocity element of that but it's your sustainability or your rate of fire. If you only have 120 rounds, you know, I can shoot 120 rounds, I don't know, within five minutes or so. And if we're talking suppressive fire from um, a lot of troops, and this is one thing that um, military um, managers, um, if you will, want to call them that, especially in the U.S. Army, liked um, single-fire rifles, but also the British Army and others, because they worried about supplying enough um, ammunition to, to units that they would just shoot up all their ammunition and then they would be out of the fight. 
Um, so your velocity of attack, if you will, not necessarily your velocity of movement, your velocity of attack can be very limited. Now, we don't have, because of unexpected having the war start up there, a lot of our armor um, is badly positioned. Um, we don't have that velocity of movement attack versus the Soviets. We have very little armor here. And it sometimes is getting in trouble. I'm learning more about the supply levels you can see down here, which are important. I don't know whether I should move him into the swamp just to be able to move, but then try to get back to the supply, because uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to push him back to get him in better supply. Can't even move to there if I move him out. So I don't know. We'll see about that in a minute. But so your velocity of attack, and so with the Soviets in reality, and this is why, um, if you look at it, the war, um, and you can look in World War One as well. Um, although the especially in World War One, but another time, the front line very well may be a continuous thing combat or maybe I should restate it a battle or battles weren't a continuous thing um, and a battle as I'm sort of using the term at the moment um, we can use the term in different ways is like the Battle of Waterloo or the Battle of Blenheim or, or um, Fontenoy or something like that in the 18th century in which you got the big the two armies together they go and they smash together they fight the battle now the day before, the two sides very well may have been shooting at each other, but they were, you know, some cavalry units, some light infantry, um, skirmishing with each other. Uh, and they may be fighting the day after, again, skirmishing each other. But the day before and the day after aren't the battle. They are skirmishes. They are um, enemy elements, units, or elements of units, however you want it, because you can always call a unit a squad, a, um, uh, you know something like that, but um, clashing with each other, but they're not necessarily a battle. Um, so there very well may have been, you know, if we look at, oh, the line, front line is sort of running along whatever river this is right here. Um, you know, very well may be shooting each other a little bit every day. But you see the idea of a battle is when you've used, and again, why this is a wonderful um, game element of railways here is that you bring in enough supply of ammunition to sustain your offensive to sustain your battle and without that um, and ammunition is partially what I've been talking about your cartridges in your that a person is carrying but it is also the artillery shells the bombs that are um, shifted to a, an air base that you know, can, um, you know, how many tons of bombs do you need sitting there? And I don't know these answers, but sitting there for your um, Sturmovik or your um, Stuka bomber, you know, dive bombers to, um, to, you know, take off, fly, do a mission, turn around, land, rearm, do this again and again and again and again and again and keep a sustained operational level. Now, I know as time, well, it varies a bit, of course, but Germany generally had more motorization, even if a division was still a walking infantry division, it still was achieving, in a general sense, um, more motorization than the Soviets. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to, on this map, travel any faster. It just means that wherever the corps or army in these cases, um, has their supply dumps it you know can mean whether it's rifle and machine gun ammunition or artillery ammunition getting it to where it's needed and distributed better within that and so you have sus velocity and, and sustainability so um, some of these supply elements here now so we have here getting around okay so if we attack him with this unit here um, we're gonna lose one if we attack here they'll lose four and if we do this here, and let's I want to click over here so we can see this guy here. Entrenchment level, morale, readiness. So I'm learning to look at these more. So let's see how some of that change morale and readiness, particularly um, when 
we put some rockets on it. You can see how they both reduce down morale more considerably. So, we're going to now hit them hard, and they hit us back a little bit. Okay, now these guys, it's a one for one. Now here, I'm wondering if we if we can hit there, and that would also be a good hit as well. I'm wondering about using that. Um, right now, and because if we can push in here we can open up supply to considerably to come in and cut their supply okay so let's hit him here with our full strength and we get a little damage. Okay, no real advancement there. So we can't we're still being squeezed for supply up here. Because the question, do I come up here and try to raid? Cut all of their supply. They can bring supply down this way, I think. So I don't know that that will be able to use. I'm going to take the option of... that severely. They hurt me there. Well, I'm going to just stay a bit more inactive. Now here I'm going to move you up to here. Now I've got to learn how to use engineers, pioneers, whatever you want to call this unit, a little better. I'm going to, which I lose some morale, to, but um, as you can see, it drops in half. But I'm not planning on attacking with it this turn. I'm just wanting to get into position for future operations. And we're going to move here. Uh, you, I want to. Re reinforced more so than just resupplied. I'd like to push a little bit more in the north there. Now here, we have this unit here that's limited to operating on the rails and I still not fully figured out as well how to use this unit now I want to move this unit to here so that we I'm not going to attack there because we're going to lose but hopefully that anti-tank gun will face off better against the tanks him back to here so that we have better supply situations to reinforce that. Now, okay, good, we can move this back here. Hopefully get in better supply next turn. So, and I'm not going to push on 
this core with my Italians or my Germans. Just no point in that. We're in still mostly doing a holding action here now. Here we're facing, quite honestly, weaker allies, which they were historically. See, I don't know whether, well... I have concerns. I would like to again to push pressure up through here to cut off their um, railway connection there. So they're still in supply there. That's not good. That of course is very not good. I would like to move that to there, but we have some other ores coming. Don't want to see that or that cut off. Okay, we'll come to here. We are in a bit of a bend of the river, but it gives them a little too much. You know, too many opportunities to attack from. These I can reinforce. Okay, so this is sort of tricky. Now him, we need to move back considerably. We gotta re rebuild that. Can I reinforce that with? Go to eight? Okay, I'll take that and leave it right where it is. That'll be a good move. Not a good move. An okay move. Although we are a bit weaker. And more so I don't want to quite give up this river line here so um, I think that'll give us the better chance now here um, yeah, let's get you up to the theater how well can we reinforce you Great. Okay, now we're still looking at this here. There's no point in not trying to damage it, this. Or this 
destroying it, maybe. a bit and let's take that and hold it now with the army it's stronger than we would have held it with just moving up one of these other doors for units to reinforce as well. We're also trying to move these guys up. Join the other Italian forces, I think, or no, I think we need to, uh, we were going to move them this way. So we have more artillery down here in the south. Now, here. No, not that range, but okay. Here we go. Before we start that, let's look. We got readiness 30, morale 21, entrenchment level. Okay. 30, 21. And now 28, 16. And now these guys here. That's what, what I've been wanting to do. I want to get to hold here because I think that'll help my supply situation. Down in the south. Now, since I don't think we're going to need this immediately here, let's move this up to... That'll be alright to there. Now here we have this mess. Correctly for the partisan map. Okay, so I want to. Yeah, let's get one star back in. No, we're not going to attack. We're just going to keep following them and harassing them. I think these guys will disappear now that we've taken the capital. It's doing pretty good for the mess that it is. Now, how are we going to be able to? How well are we going to be able to? The eight? Okay, I'll take that here. 
Now that we're back in Italian territory and near railroads, we have much more the ability to reinforce, resupply. Right, we'll go to 10. They're going to let us. Hold out until Brook. I'm right now very pleased at my retreat. It not been painless by any means, but it has definitely allowed a rebuilding of my forces. I had a brilliant, and I did a brilliant cutoff earlier, if you've been watching, of the units that were up here, destroyed a lot, very painful for them, but they have just been able to reinforce with three armies. Oh, that's a lot more than it was historically down there. Um, and we're just going to spend this turn, and yes, they will probably bomb us. I may have moved too much of my air force out of the way. Maybe I should move in fighters. Uh, seven's still fairly strong. I don't want to be having that flank turn too easily. And we might as well do this. I don't think shooting guns this turn particularly help us. And yes, let's also. that up and we can maybe swing around again with it. Now here I guess we're spending a lot on reinforcement. I knew they would do that. Let's move these guys up this way as well. Use air power. Now, down here. Let's start with some of these units down here. Okay. Um, Been a while since I last played. Um, hmm. We're moving them out of the way a bit. We'll be back to more aggressive op operations soon. we can cut some supplies there. Wait a minute, am I going too far? No. Let's get up there. Oh, 
Okay, gives us an idea of what's out there. Hmm. Well, we really don't have much MPP to do anything else. Okay, so we're going to end the turn, I think, for better or for worse. Hopefully for better. Well. Determined core down this way wouldn't go amiss. These guys. And have a more flexible point to be there. Okay. Now, yes, we're ending the turn for better or for worse. Greece surrenders. Okay, good. Finally. Germany plunders 135 MPP. Good. See if a Cretan garrison shows up. to hinder supply okay ah oh, Canadians voting a plebiscite to allow conscription okay US aircraft bomb Tokyo in the Doolittle raid well good That's good for them Now, as you can see how they, um, instead of continuing their velocity attack, those two cores reinforced, so they were kept from moving ahead. So it's seeming like they're a bit more in a pocket than penetrating deep into us. Yes, figured some of that would go on. Good. That's what they're meant to do. Escorts. And they took more punishment than they gave out. Coastal battered me, but my coastal batteries didn't fire back. In fact, at least.
like I said, I didn't want to have my plank turned. Good job, mechanized infantry. Now that is not nice. Not welcome. That's what you're supposed to be doing. By doing this, we've kept them down to only one province able to attack to Brook, which is good. Uh, well. Try not to lose that unit. Oh, just being costly right now. damage. But now I can move these Italians up. And note they're not attacking the any tank defense. are not trapped by us, but Red Army forms any tank units. Bummer.
USSR transfer Siberian units. Those are 14.5 millimeter anti-tank rifles they're carrying on their shoulder. Uh, ETRD 41 maybe. Foreign Minister reports diplomatic success. Saudi Arabia closer to the Allies. I my whole map. British troops invade Madagascar. My whole Mediterranean plan has gone to hell. Bataan completely occupied the Japanese forces. Oh, I forgot to even do Finland last turn. Wow. Forgot all about Finland. Like I say, for better or for worse, the end of the turn. Yes, we know about the partisans quick to dismiss. Okay, Führerhamp quarters. Given large armored formations that both sides can deploy on the eastern front, there have been calls for formation of dedicated anti-tank units. These will be useful when encountering enemy armored formations, but will be fragile when fighting enemy infantry. We could, at a low cost, quickly form three dedicated anti-tank units in Warsaw for 200 MPP at 50 MPP per turn. Okay, we can afford that. Um, they will deploy at half strength and will need upgrading. Yes, we'll do that. Hopefully that makes economic sense. We can afford it, but meaning economic sense is in um, cheaper than other options. We can see how even the fairly weak unupgraded Italian ones. Okay, so this is into that here has stopped those tanks from attacking. Um, not in very good supply at the moment, but we can do better attacking now. Um, so we're going to end the turn here, or the this, the episode here. I want to thank everyone for watching. I want to thank you for liking the videos. I really do appreciate that. And hey, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. More great um, war gaming action. And of course, please post questions, comments, suggestions, ideas, tips. Love to improve my playing. See you next time for more Strategic Command.